videotaping tonight's game. And, uh,
On defense, number 14, Hillary Kofelt. In the midfield, number 19, Julia Bohe. In the midfield, number 20, Christy Ortiz. And starting in goal for the Highlanders, number 12, Mary Alessi. The assistant coach of the Highlanders is Chris Ragnar. The head coach is Gary Wilcox. Ladies and the Vaqueros of El Capitan High School. Everybody, I'm Dan Williams, and on behalf of George Langevin Sports Video Productions, I'd like to welcome you to Southwestern College. We are underway for the Women's Division II High School Soccer Championships. We've got two top teams on the field from Helix High School. It's the Highlanders, and they're going to be going up against the 1997 defending champions, the El Capitan High School Vaqueros. The Helix Highlanders, they'll be wearing the green jerseys and black shorts. For the Vaqueros, they will have the yellow jerseys and black shorts. Vaqueros will be moving from right to left. They'll have in their goal Autumn Moody. She'll be the keeper for today's game. Ball quickly getting down inside the box. Now taken over by Alicia Masteller. Action picks up, trying to clear it out are the Vaqueros. We have got a beautiful night for soccer. Two great teams as it's cleared out off the foot of Sandra Cota, and that's gonna be a corner kick 
for the Highlanders. So with 38 minutes left, just seconds into the beginning of the game, corner kick advantage for the Helix Highlanders. This time it's going to be Christy Ortiz who will try and bring the ball quickly across the face. Looking for some redirection. She goes long with it, gets by everybody. Not sure if it was touched by anybody. Over there to pick it up is Rachel Odahall. Great field. It's in perfect shape. You can't ask for better facilities for this game. And it's a nice ball going way downfield. Coming up quickly was Elizabeth Lusk for El Capitan. Now at midfield, Heather Bergio. Picked up now by Reese. Reese on the near side to Masteller. Masteller challenged by Lewis. And now trying to keep control are the Vaqueros. Mentioned it earlier, the El Capitan Vaqueros looking to try and repeat as Division II champions as last year they went up against San Pasquale High School, defeating them four to three. No score as we're just underway. We've got 40 minute halves, and I'm going to tell you right now, these halves are going to be action packed as both teams are ready to play. Let's take a look at the rosters. First of all, for the Vaqueros, the assistant coach is Sean Harp. Head coach is Robert Romero. Goalkeeper, Autumn Moody. She's in the net. And the rest of the roster is as follows. Lori Craw wears jersey number two. Number three is Tiffany Fay. Fay, one of the captains for the Vaqueros. Jennifer Zapeta wears jersey number six. Shawnee Flint, number seven. She also is a captain. Whistle blown by the referee. Referee for today's game, Elmer Cabling, a very, very experienced referee. Eight years of high school, four years of NCAA experience. Ball comes in. Now challenging for the ball, taking it on her own is Shawnee Flint. Nice ball picked up by Lusk. Lusk moving on the far side, challenged by Downey. Lusk can't quite keep control of the ball. It goes outside of the touchline. And for the Highlanders, they'll take a quick throw in on the far sideline. Victoria Jenkins wears jersey number eight for the Vaqueros. Number nine is Amanda Montgomery. Jersey number 10 worn by Lee Huttenbrock. Ball comes in. Sails wide of the near post. And so that'll be a goal kick for the Highlanders. They'll bring it back out. Becky Perleman wears jersey number 14. 15 is Sandra Cota. Alicia Masteller wears jersey number 16. Ball back into play, carries up towards midfield. Joe Lay now back out to Joe Lay. Chamney for the Vaqueros sends it back out the other way. Rounding out the rest of this talented Vaqueros team. Brianne Chamney, number 17, 18, is worn by Heather Bergio. Kendra Ball wears jersey 19. Melanie Ball, no relation, wears 20. And Bree Smith wears jersey number 21. Two injured players for the Vaqueros on the sideline today, Holly Pinner and Elizabeth Chapel. Ball now picked up by Perleman. She sends it down and going after it defensively, Laura Downey. Downey with the ball. She'll send it across midfield to be picked up by Lacey Lewis. Lewis is challenged by Mesteller. Ball is free. Lewis with control. Defense too strong by the Vaqueros. Reese back out on the near side to Perleman. Perleman looking for some help, being challenged down in the corner by Bree Viscara. Let's take a look at the Helix Highlanders roster. Chris Rittenauer is the assistant coach. Gary Wilcox is the head coach. Whistle blown, and that'll be a kick by the Vaqueros. Brianne Chamney will send the ball deep. Nice ball, bending, bending. Headed off nicely by Laura Downey. Back out towards midfield on the far sideline. 
Nice takeaway by the Highlanders. Now driving downfield with a nice ball. But the defense is there for the Vaqueros as Chamney sends it back towards the middle. Ball launched, going to get by everybody. Coming up for the Vaqueros, Autumn Moody will take a look at the strength of her leg. Sends it high, will take a header off of Noel Jolet. And that's out of bounds off the foot of Desiree Reese. But the call is made against the Highlanders, Christy Ortiz. Masteller brings it back in. The keeper for the Highlanders is Mary Alessi. Noel Jolay wears jersey number two. Number three is Lauren Martin. Andrea Jacoby wears jersey number four. Rachel Odahall, number five. And Lori Marceau is six. Now action just outside the box. Cleared back out, carried over nicely by Onan. Now controlled by the Highlanders. Carry through, picked up nicely. Ball bending towards the far sideline. Going after it is Zapata. Zapata takes a tumble, stays with the Highlanders. Highlanders now trying to move in with a shot on goal. Strong shot by Amanda Onan. Adam Moody with a sure-handed save on the far post. Action picks back up, sending it back down by Laura Downey. First shot on goal of the day by Amanda Onan. Once again, ball looking to get inside the box. Cleared back out by Alicia Masteller. So rounding off the roster, for the Highlanders as driving down is Joe Lay. Joe Lay trying to center it, but this time it's going to be taken back. The whistle blown and given to the Vaqueros. Holly Fleischer wears jersey number seven for the Highlanders. Laura Downey is number eight. Lacey Lewis wears jersey number nine. Candom Gardner wears ten. Eleven is Amanda Onan. She has the first official shot on goal of the game. Bree Vizcara wears thirteen. Hillary Kofelt is number 14, Lisa Lewis number 16, Jersey 18, that's Natisse Martin, Julia Bohe wears 19, and number 20 is Christy Ortiz. Like to wish a congratulations to Christy Ortiz. Christy from Helix High School during this week of March 3rd was named to the Prep Athlete of the Week list for the local Union Tribune. Ortiz is a senior. She plays midfielder and she scored the lone goal of the game as Helix beat Escondido in overtime to advance to this Division II championship. Ortiz also had an assist on the game-winning goal in Helix's 2-1 to -one upset over the top-seeded Scripps Ranch. So once again, congratulations to Helix's Christy Ortiz. Now picking up the ball is Chamney. Chamney sends it back down, headed on in the direction of the Highlanders by Desiree Reese. Ball is free and now battling for control. Nice header once again by Laura Downey. Laura Downey, super, super vertical jump. She's been married, or measured, that is, as having a tremendous vertical leap of 36 inches. You'll be seeing her flying all around. Now it's Jennifer Zapata down in the corner, crossing, and it's going to be off the foot of Holly Fleischer. And the throw in will come from the far sideline. So a talented group of athletes on both of these teams, El Capitan looking to repeat as defending champions. Helix Highlanders liking to take that championship away this year and be crowned themselves. Throw in now, action inside the box of the Highlanders. And that's going to be off the foot and it'll be a corner kick now for El Capitan. Normally it's Becky Perlman doing the corner kicks. We'll see who comes out over there. No score in this game. 
29 minutes left in the first half, 40 minute halves. You mentioned a beautiful night and a beautiful field. This is Southwestern College. JC, one of the many in San Diego County, and this is probably one of the best fields to play sports on. Used quite extensively for a lot of CIF sports. Ball coming in, looking for some help, crosses the face. And now a substitution will come in for the Vaqueros. Waiting on the sidelines, number 19, Kendra Ball. So Ball will come in as fresh legs for the Vaqueros. Coming out is Alicia Masteller. And play resumes on a goal kick. Laura Downey. Forward for the Highlanders, puts the ball back into play. Ball back downfield, trapped by Chamney. Can't quite hang on to it, and now picking the ball up. And that's going to be given to the Highlanders. So it'll be Christy Ortiz with the quick throw in on the near side. Field can't be in any better shape than we've got it as the tackle goes out of the goal line by a sliding Kendra ball, and so a corner kick comes up. Had a lot of rains during the month of February that really washed out a lot of soccer matches, uh, both in the high school and at the lower club levels. But tonight it's blue skies and dry field, and you can't ask for a better one. Christy Ortiz comes in with the corner kick, coming around a lot of action inside the box. Ortiz tries to center it back, and this time outside the goal line. And for the Vaqueros, they'll send it back into play. Ball coming down, headed nicely, back and forth it goes. Good close-up action right in front of the camera crew. As driving down is Elizabeth Luck, she tries to send it down, nobody there for the Vaqueros. And now coming up quickly is Perleman. Perleman back over to Huttenbrock. And now getting inside the box and coming over is Mary Alessi. I tell you, <laughs> these goalkeepers, really have to have a lot of the same fundamental skills as baseball players, specifically infielders such as a second baseman or a shortstop. They really have to have the mobility to move to their left and their right quickly, to be able to get down on the ball and really smother to make sure that it doesn't get underneath or through them. As a matter of fact, you'll find that a lot of the keepers, if they play softball or baseball, depending on the sport, they will be an infielder. Ortiz now trying to take the ball away from Huttenbrock. Vaqueros keep possession and moving down on the near side is Perleman. Perleman being challenged nicely by Bree Vizcara goes outside of the touchline. And that ball sails wide of the near post and it comes back out. Both of these teams did have Round one games, Scripps Ranch went up against the Helix Highlanders, and for the Highlanders, they ended up beating Scripps Ranch two to nothing. Substitution now comes in number nine for the Vaqueros, that's Amanda Montgomery. So a Montgomery adds fresh legs for these Vaqueros. Nice footwork by Huttenbrock, takes it out over to Perleman. Perleman's going to send it down into the corner. And right there, the sure hands of Alessi. Alessi with the throw. Ball awarded the other way. Talked to Elmer Cabling earlier before the game started. Asked him what he was going to look for. And he said he wanted to really be able to try and let these athletes play the game, this being a championship game. Doesn't like to see coming up uh, pushing or shoving or block tackling coming up from behind, which is a very dangerous move. He says he won't tolerate that. But he's going to actually let fouls not be called and give advantage where it may. Nice footwork and move by Laura Downey. Downey tries to send it down. 
through the legs uh, of Anand. And now Anand being challenged by two, now three defenders, and taken away by Chamney. Amanda Anand had two, and she was splitting those, but then came up Chamney from her stopper position and was able to take the ball away effectively. All the games we've covered so far in CIF championship play has been super close games. Last night we were up in North County now coming up looking for a cross and there was a hard shot sailed into the wide net on the wide far side. Comes up to be a goal kick for Helix and that I'll tell you what was a rocket. Elizabeth Lusk had simply sent a hot shot ball right into the side of the goal and come out as a goal kick, but immediately it's the Vaqueros who take control and taking a double tumble was Joe Lay and on the ground is Becky Perleman, but play continues. Perleman slow getting up as action heats up in the near corner, centering it inside the box and just gets through. Off of the post, another shot on goal, saved and cleared out temporarily by the Highlanders. A lot of action. Inside the box and a whistle blows for a official timeout as Becky Perleman is pointing either to her hand or to her wrist. The CIF San Diego section Perleman is going to be coming out of the game. Substitution coming back in for the Vaqueros will be Rachel Nathman. Well, there was a lot of action heating up as that ball got through the defenders of the Highlanders. At one point in time, the ball ricocheted off the far post. Ball was free momentarily, and it was anybody's call, but the Highlanders were effectively able to clear it out. Now on the throw-in, free kick by the Highlanders. Good strong ball downfield. And it looks like it just might be a goal kick. We'll take a look and see what Elmer Cabling indicates. He indicates it's going to be a throw in on the far side. Still no score. 21 minutes left in the first half. 40 minute halves to determine the 98 Women's Division II High School Soccer Champions. With this caliber of talent that you have out on the field, you never know when that ball's going to find the net. Ortiz trying to put the ball towards the net, and that goes out off the foot of Christy Ortiz in a goal kick for the Vaqueros. Mentioned earlier in round one of the playoffs, we'll call it quarterfinals. Helix Highlanders were up against Scripps Ranch. Two to nothing was the score, and at the time, the Helix upset of top seeded Scripps Ranch. They moved then into the semifinals, going up against Escondido. Escondido and Helix ended in a 0 0 tie, had to go into double overtime. Finally, Highlanders beating Escondido 1 to nothing, but after double overtime. Lusk can't find the handle of the ball, goes outside of the touchline on the near sideline. Home team officially for tonight's game is the Vaqueros, the visitors, the Highlanders. Good close-up action. Always like to see the ball come to this side of the field. You really get to see the athletes in action. Now moving downfield, nice effort. Driving after the ball is Reese. Reese effectively challenged defensively by the Highlanders. Nice effort. And the ball's awarded to the Vaqueros. We've got a spirited crowd on both sides. We're on the Vaqueros home side, so you hear the crowd of family and friends cheering on their Vaqueros team. <laughs> Trying to set something up as Vaqueros. Ortiz sends a short one into the air. Ball back out to Chamney, who sends it down. 
It's a hard field. Now double 13s in the near corner. Viscara versus Lusk. On the sidelines, Becky Perlman, who came off holding her hand, has got an ice bag on her hand, so it doesn't look like it's going to be too serious. She'll be back into the game. So you can take a look and see how the ball bounces. This is really dry, hard turf. It's really going to be helpful for the teams that have effective passing. That ball's going to scoot and skid very easily. Very well-groomed Bermuda-style grass. A slight berm in the middle of the field because this field is also used for football, so it needs to have good drainage. And good drainage it does. We mentioned earlier, torrential rains, the El Nino came through. Ball inside the box. Cleared out now off of Fleischer. Carry through by Lewis. Now moving down field, Chamney. Inside the box, looking for an opportunity, a shot. And that's going to be Ricochet. So trying to turn the corner was the Vaqueros, number nine, Montgomery. And effectively, Fleischer and Downey defensively for the Highlanders, able to build the defensive wall. So it becomes a corner kick for the Vaqueros. On the far, far corner. Ball now coming across, looking for some headers. It's up, and it's over. Nice jumping header by Elizabeth Lusk. Sends the ball up and over the crossbar, and so the goal kick comes up for the Highlanders. Great game so far. Both teams moving up and down the field. No score, however. Advantage has been quite equal as both teams have been able at times to effectively bring the ball down into their part of the field. Now racing after the ball, Tiffany Fay and Christy Ortiz battling for it off the foot of a Vaquero, and so Ortiz will have the ball. Looking for a throw in. Just inside the box, off the foot of Chamney. Bounces up and over and out of the short four-foot fence that we have here. Perimeter of this field has a short chain-link fence around the entire perimeter. This is a great. This is a great stadium. Also, you got full bleachers on both sides, and we have quite a bit of people here tonight for this Division II soccer championship. Last night, as I mentioned, we were up in San Diego area. Good, strong throw in this time as it's cleared out. Headed on and carried through, picked up by Montgomery. Montgomery now continuing, nice slide tackle. Fleischer for the Highlanders slows down that offense attack. Throw in on the far sideline. Last night up at the San Diego High School, or at least what used to be the San Diego High School, it was the Bishop School going up against Francis Parker. Nice footwork moving down. Francis Parker and coach Jeff Scott upset Bishop School. It was a close game all the way around. Final score was 3-1 to one in favor of Francis Parker. They are crowned the Division IV women's CIF soccer champions and it was a very spirited game. Susan Filipponi, the head coach of Bishops and Jeff Scott, longtime friends, was able to really have their teams fired up and ready to go but the team that was really wanting it badly was Jeff Scott and his Francis Parker. They really came out and beat Bishops all the way around to the ball defensively and offensively. Substitution now coming in back for the Vaqueros Perlman is back in after icing her hand. Taking a breather is Lee Huddenbrock. Now action inside the box. It's up in the air, taking a bounce. Nice job by Lusk to clear it out. That could have been a dangerous ball. You know, those high volleying type of balls that bounce in front of the Vaqueros keeper or any keeper really can cause some problems. I've seen it before that if the keeper misjudges that or it's really got some hard service right in that goal box area, that ball can literally bounce and jump over the head 
of the keeper. But before the ball could bounce on the ground, a charging Elizabeth Lusk was able to send the ball out. Squeaking down the far sideline, staying inside, is the ball. Back the other way. The finals regular season ratings in girls soccer. Ball coming through now. Ortiz challenging. So Tory Pines rated as the number one seed coming into this game. Cleared out now. Action picking up. That is at the regular season. It was La Costa Canyon rated third. Mount Carmel was third. That is La Costa Canyon second. Granite Hills was fourth. El Capitan was rated 10th. On the far sideline, Tiffany Fay now coming into the game. Bree Smith, Smith, fresh legs for the Vaqueros. And during this first half of play, the Vaqueros making quite a number of changes and substitutions. Helix Highlanders staying with their starting rotation. Haven't seen any substitutions on their team yet. No score as we're winding down under 13 minutes to play. Nice long ball. Goes outside of the goal line off the foot of Desiree Reese, who was trying to redirect it and carry it through into the net. And so for the Highlanders, they'll take over. In other action in Division I, Semi-finals, Natalie Jensen scored off an assist from Paige Lowry to give LaCosta Canyon a one to nothing game. Back over Perlman. It was also LaCosta Canyon over Rancho Bernardo in double overtime. But all is not because the two teams who are here tonight are the ones that survived the quarter and semifinals matchups to be able to get here for this great Division II soccer championship game. Division III semifinals had USDHS, that's University of San Diego High School, defeating four-seeded Coronado. Now action just inside the box. Looking to clear it out is the Highlanders. Trying to stuff it in is Vaqueros. And it is cleared out, picked up, though, by Faye on the outside. And right now, time running down to 10 minutes. It's the Vaqueros putting offensive pressure on the Highlanders' defense. So the Vaqueros are starting to come alive this part of the first half. Substitution now. Once again, Vaqueros. Coming out is Kendra Ball. Number eight, Victoria Jenkins will come in. So Coach Robert Romero continuing to give his players rest, wanting to make sure he has as many fresh legs on the field as possible. Ball comes back into play. Picked up by Faye. Faye, one of the team captains for the Vaqueros. And out off of the foot of Holly Fleischer. Other team captains for the Vaqueros, Autumn Moody and Shawnee Flint. Coming back in for a set of Perlman. After the ball, picking it up is Smith. Smith with the turnaround. Smith trying to bring it out towards the center, top with Lusk. Lusk has a quick turnaround. The ball was bending, but it sails wide of the far post, and the Highlanders will have a goal kick. Gary Wilcox, head coach for the Highlanders, his counterpart, Robert Romero, assistant coaches for the Highlanders is Chris Reidenauer. The assistant coach for the Vaqueros is Sean Harp. In the Coley's box for the Vaqueros, Autumn Moody, her counterpart tonight, Mary Alessi. Throw in and a strong one at that as a double header. 
Both teams also, at times, really using their body size to really fight for that ball. Sometimes it almost looks like a scrum in a rugby match. Now the ball is coming free. Ball is free and a breakaway! The ball broke free and racing for it was Lusk. Only had a few feet before it came into the hands of Mary Alessi. And that was a short, short breakaway. It was already towards the top of the box, but the ball broke free and it looked like for a moment if Lusk could get there in time, she'd have a shot on goal. And the ball awarded to the Highlanders. Coach Gary Wilcox wondering what that call was all about, and so was Noel Jolie. A free kick will come off the foot of Brianne Chamney. Chamney sends it down deep. And that sails inches above the crossbar and lands on top of the net. And comes out as a simple goal kick and it'll come off the foot of Laura Downey. So Downey is the designated foot person for the goal kicks as Ortiz gets challenged by Smith, goes outside of the touchline, ball awarded to the Highlanders and they'll move it back down. <laughs> Elmer Cabling instructing where the throw-in should be. Bree Viscara will have the throw-in for the Highlanders. Good close-up action. This super game of the week, the Women's Division II High School Soccer Championships being brought to you by George Langevin Sports Video Productions. We're proud to bring you Game of the Week action, and we've got a super game going with 6 minutes 43 seconds left in the first half of this 40-minute half. Double header trap by Perleman. Now taken by Joe Lay. Joe Lay moving down, trying to keep it in bounds, cannot as Jenkins of the Vaqueros helps out defensively. Coach Cabling really wants to let the flow of this championship game continue. And unless it's a fake flagrant foul, that is, he's going to let play go on. Now there's a free kick for the Highlanders, the wall being built by the El Capitan defense. Laura Downey with the strong leg. Wall being built by Faye and Bergio. Faye and Bergio is there. Right into Bergio, and then there's a shot on goal that sails through the goal post. If we could, we'd give her three points. But it comes up to be a goal kick. That was a rocket off the foot of Joe Lay, sailed back up into the back part of this stadium. Ball comes out, it's a short kick. And that's the type of call that Elmer Cabling wants to make sure doesn't happen. He told me at the beginning of the game, he did not want to have any fouls coming up from behind, just as that, and you could see referee Cabling talking to the Highlander player about refraining from doing that again. Throw in toward the middle of the field, Ortiz. Pick up by Joe Lay. Joe Lay now moving down on the near side. Can't quite get it. Good defense off of Rachel Nathman. And that goes back the other way. Throw in. Jenkins, before the throw in happens, Coach Romero has a substitution. Shawnee Flint, one of the team captains, will be back into the game taking a, taking a rest, that is, is Bree Smith. So some more fresh legs by Coach Romero. He's keeping his team fresh on the field. Nice ball downfield as it crosses midline and it's going to bounce outside of the touchline. Ball will be awarded to the Highlanders and they'll move back down the other way. Mentioned earlier that they also have CIF football playoffs here as well. They all end up in the Qualcomm Stadium, but 
Nice tackle getting up quickly was Joe Lay for the Highlanders as she had a nice slide, another attempted tackle. Now ball just inside the box to be cleared out now by Bergio. Good effort by Lewis of the Highlanders to keep the ball into play. Now set up by Kofelt. The big booming kick of Chamney sends it down across the midline. Throw in on the far side, Fleischer. Fleischer back out to Downey. For control, Vaqueros. And back in her defensive position. Downey with the ball, sends it out to Ortiz. Sails outside of the touchline. Two minutes, 53 seconds, and counting down left in this first half. Good half it has been. Both teams able to work the ball up and down the field, but neither team being able to pierce the defensive wall of each other's goal. Now for the Vaqueros, nice passing, it's setting up control. Ortiz to challenge Perlman. Huge double team right there. As you heard the collide, that was Victoria Jenkins of the Vaqueros going up against Christy Ortiz. Both of these teams playing on all cylinders. They are out to prove that they truly are the champions. If this game ends in overtime, they will have sudden victory. 15 minutes to play for sudden victory. If that doesn't happen and it ends in a tie, they will have a second sudden victory overtime. If it ends in a tie at the end of the second overtime, then both teams would, would share in a co-championship. Yeah. Nice ball, squeaks through, and at the last minute, Viscari has the foot on the ball. Ortiz trying to take control. Highlanders now with possession. Viscara sends it out of the touchline. Picked up now by Jenkins. Good two-kinded throw comes in nicely. Headed back the other way by Odahal. Again, close-up action. Off the foot of Fay, Ortiz centers the ball, going after it is Anin. Anin being challenged by Bergio. Bergio and Anin now coming to help out is Fay. Fay now up against Anin. And it's too much defense by the Vaqueros, and they take control on the far side. Nice defensive work as Anin is double teamed by the Vaqueros. Good strong kick by Chamney, sending it down, down. Down he tries to send it back. Off the foot of the Vaquero, so it remains Highlander's ball. Under two minutes to play, referee Elmer Cabling will have the official clock on the field and he will blow the whistle and let us know when this half ends. It's been a good half for both teams, no score, both battling it out. And this time the ball just inside the box. Ball is free and it's Ortiz who wants to clear it out and does so and slows down the attack offense. If there's any slight edge going into this end of the half, it might be to the Vaqueros. They picked up the pace at about 13 minutes left in the half and has been able to effectively work the ball down deep. And if we've taken a look at when the ball has been into each defending team's area, I think Vaqueros probably has the edge. I think they've had the ball a few more times down in the Highlanders part of the field. Nice throw in to an open Tiffany Fay. Faye's going to look to try and center it down into the box. Can't quite find anybody there. Shot on goal. It's deflected partially by, it looked like Laura Downey took a piece of that ball that came off the foot of Tiffany Faye. And that is the whistle, and that ends this first half. And a great first half it is, both teams effectively working it up and down the field. But the final, after 40 minutes of play, the Helix Highlanders nothing and the Vaqueros of El Capitan nothing. Coming right up.
start of the second half. Say hi to Coach Bartell. Tell him that the PA announcer said to go down and say hi to him. not want to give them an easy goal like we did against Grossman. Okay? That was too easy of a goal. We don't want to give that up again. One of those bound to go in. Okay? Um, you guys, another thing with those short passes is it makes them chase us. They're like constantly having to go from one player and you pass it, they're going to the ball. They're following the ball, you guys, and it wears them down too. So do those, and they get tired and exhausted and they don't know like what to do. And they're getting a lot of runs because all of a sudden the ball's on one side of the field, they get it, okay, we, we get it, we shift it over, and they're all on one side, and then they're shifting over, and they keep on running and running. That number 11 is dead, okay? Hi everybody, welcome back to the second half of the Women's Division II High School Soccer Championships. Well, we ended the first half with no scores, 0-0. Zero, zero. And with the start of the second half, we have both teams moving in opposite directions. Now for the Vaqueros, they'll be moving from left to right on your television screen. Still in the keeper's box is Autumn Moody for the Vaqueros. It's Mary Alessi. She retains her position as keeper for the Highlanders. Highlanders will be defending the right-hand goal. Both teams able to move the ball up and down in the first half. A couple shot on goals, but for the most part, it was good defense by both the Highlanders and the Vaqueros as they stiffened up the defensive wall when they needed to. Another 40 minutes, and we're going to try and see if we can determine a champion, and we mentioned it earlier, is if this comes down to overtime, they'll have sudden victory overtime. They'll have a 15-minute overtime period. They'll have a second one if need be, and then if it ends at a tie, then it will be co-championships, co-champions. Off the foot of number 19, Kendra Ball, the throw-in comes. Now there's action in the box. And the big foot of Brianne Chamney for the Vaqueros sends the ball out towards midfield. Laura Downey sends it back the other way. Now working together, that's Reese versus Downey. Ball coming back out, so it'll be a corner kick. Advantage the Highlanders. We'll see if we can get the ball up into the air. Ortiz will do the corner kick. It's either Ortiz or Bohe. Ball coming across. Header. And Laura Downey with her 36-inch vertical jump redirects on a header, but it sails wide of the far post. It ends up going off of a Vaqueros player. And so the Highlanders will come up with a second corner kick in a row. Ortiz, watch for Laura Downey. She's in the middle. Downey looking for some help. Cleared out by the Vaqueros. Challenge, Lusk versus Fleischer. Quick throw in. Gets by Zapata. Headed back the other way by team captain Tiffany Fay. Fay picks the ball up again. Ball at midfield. Outside of the touchline. Let's take a look at the rosters once again, just to remind you who's out there playing. For the Vaqueros, Adam Moody is the goalkeeper. Lori Craw is jersey number two. Three is Tiffany Fay. Jennifer Zapata wears six. Shawnee Flint, one of the team captains, along with Fay and Moody, she wears seven. 
eight is Victoria Jenkins. Number nine is worn by Amanda Montgomery. Number 10 is Lee Hutchenbrock. Number 11, Desiree Reese. And number 12, Rachel Nathman. Elizabeth Lusk wears Lucky 13. Becky Perlman wears 14. Sandra Cota wears 15. 16 is Alicia Masteller. Number 17, Brianne Chamney. Chamney with a very strong leg. 18 is Heather Bergio. Kendra Ball, 19. Melanie Ball, number 20, and Bree Smith, number 21. Two additional injured players on the team. Not playing today is Holly Pinner and Elizabeth Chapel. Taking a bounce into the sure hands of Anna Moody. She'll send one out high. It'll be short of the midline mark. Nice trap by Perlman, taken by Reese. Reese sends it down. Now picking up the ball, not quite getting there was Perlman. Perlman had been injured and off the field with a sore hand. She put some ice on it and then came back up. Taking the tumble is Joe Lay, the foul against Tiffany Fay. So it's a free kick for the Islanders. Highlanders, Holly Fleischer with the free kick. Ball comes up just outside the box, cleared out by Fay. Now picked up by Perlman. Perlman to send the ball down. Good control by Lusk. Lusk sends it down. And that's off Lusk's foot, so it goes back the other way. Becky Perlman wearing 14. Sandra Cota 15. And the throw comes back in. For the Highlanders, Mary Alessi is the keeper. She retains that spot. Nice turn move by Lewis. Lewis being challenged by Jenkins. That's off the body of Faye, and it stays possession of the Highlanders. Lauren Martin for the Highlanders. She wears jersey number three. Andrea Jacoby wears four. Now action in the box, centered at the top, looking to clear it out. Off the foot of Faye stays possession of the Highlanders. Rachel Ottahall, number five, and Lori Marceau, wearing jersey number six, will continue with the roster of the Highlanders. Fleischer, number seven. Laura Downey and her 36-inch vertical jump, number eight. Number nine worn by Lacey Lewis. Good, strong throw-in. Gets by everybody in the booming leg of Brianne Chamney, able to send the ball back out. Carry through off the foot of Reese. Reese can't quite get there, and so it goes back towards possession of the Highlanders. Camden Gardner wears jersey number 10. Amanda Onan, number 11. Bree Vizcara, lucky 13. Hillary Kofelt, 14. Lisa Lewis wears jersey 16. Natisse Martin is 18. Julia Bohe, 19. And Christy Ortiz, number 20. Strong kick headed back the other way by Perlman. Now after the ball. And an opportunity racing for the ball is Lusk. Lusk moving down, being challenged by Viscara. Viscara doing a nice job defensively of slowing down the offense attack of the Vaqueros. Now Montgomery back to Faye. Faye looking for help, can't find anybody. The Highlanders take over. Nice block by Bergio, picked up by Nathman. Back over to Fay. Fay moving down. Good slide tackle by Joe Lay. And the spirited crowd of the fans of the Vaqueros show excitement as the foul is called and a free kick comes off the foot of Brianne Chamney. Chamney sends it bending to the left. Up in the air. And that ball goes in. The ball goes in. It was. And they're going to call it no, no goal. Looked like it went in and was going to be counted. But it comes out as a goal kick, and the excitement of the crowd carried over. 
And so from the vantage point, it looked like the Vaqueros were going to draw first blood with 31 minutes left. But referee Elmer Cabling makes the call and sends the ball back the other way. Exciting, exciting action here in the girls. Division II high school soccer championships in the beautiful stadium of Southwestern Junior College. Ball is now free and to be picked up by the Vaqueros. That'll be off the foot of Holly Fleischer. As we march down in time the second half, if you thought you saw action in the first half, you're going to see things really start to heat up as time moves down. Throw in by the Vaqueros. Good, strong throw. Headed carry through by Lusk. Moving downfield is Lusk. Lusk driving to the corner. And a good effort by Christy Ortiz defensively to shut down a charging Elizabeth Lusk. Almost lost her balance at the top of the box corner. Kept her feet and was trying to make the turn for a center shot. Couldn't quite get there due to the great defense by Christy Ortiz. Now the throw in just at the top of the box. Cleared out off the foot of Joe Lay. Picked up now by Lewis. Lewis sends it out. Nice trap by Bergio. Ball now on the far side by Odahall. Odahall's turn to try to bring it down. Inside, it's going to be a quick turnaround. And sitting on the ground, a dejected Amanda Onan. Offsides was called, and the ball will go back the other way. Double header. Action at midfield, looking for control, and a good effort by Lusk. Lusk with the ball, turned around by Kofelt. Back and forth it goes. Ball is temporarily possession of the Highlanders off the foot of Amanda Onan, who sends it bouncing outside of the touch line, but this time it stays in. It's interesting on some of the sideline, on the far side, you've got some really soft turf. Right in front of us here, hardly any turf at all. It's very much dry and dead, and it's very hard. So when the ball hits over on the near sideline, it's going to bounce and carry through. But on the far sideline, it seems to have some cushion, some softness. So there's some moisture and some grass on that far sideline. That ball just tends to die. Taking a tumble, but getting right back up is Perlman. Looking for the ball. Good effort by Jenkins. Jenkins able to shield Lacey Lewis from the ball, letting it go outside the touch line. Comes back in off the head of Joe Lay. And you saw right there the bounce, the ball took a bounce into the dark brown part of the near sideline and it skipped right out. On the other side of the field, I think it would have slowed up a little bit. Down in the near corner. That's Lewis being challenged by Jenkins. This time the ball squeaks in, goes outside of the goal line on the near post, and it's a goal kick for the Vaqueros. Austin Moody, keeper for the Vaqueros, her counterpart, Mary Alessi. Brianne Chamney will send the ball back into play. El Capitan Vaquero is trying to repeat as the women's Division II high school soccer champions. They came up big time last year beating San Pascual High School. San Pascal was losing to the Vaqueros 4-1 to one at halftime, but the Vaqueros... Now the ball comes down. Reese, Reese looking to center the ball. And a nice effort again by Laura Downey, who's been back there as a stopper all game long. She's done a good job. Laura Downey, the offensive threat with the 36-inch vertical down when they're on offense. And then she's a good stopper back on the back-end defensive side. So 4-1 to one was the score last year. San Pasquale was losing. Ball coming through now, racing for the ball. Lusk, Lusk with it. She keeps it in, now there's action. Still free, and that's gonna be a corner kick. 
Wow. Laura Downey got tangled up. Elizabeth Lusk was all over the ball inside the box. Laura Downey was there defensively. Mary Alessi had a touch on the ball. Finally, it went out off the body of Laura Downey. And so now the corner kick comes in for the Vaqueros. Perlman sends it crossing, and it's too high. It goes by everybody. And outside, and the ball goes back over to the Highlanders. So once again, the Vaqueros put offensive pressure down deep in the Highlanders' box. They've done that all game long. First half, the advantage seemed to go to the Vaqueros in the pressure. And once again, we see it in this half of the game. Vaqueros, time and time again, putting the pressure down in the Highlanders, but give credit to the defense of the Highlanders. They've stiffened and come up big time when they've had to. Vaqueros now trying to move the ball back down. Ortiz looking for the ball. Lusk on the ground. She gets back up. And now out of nowhere, picking it up is Vizcarra. Taking control, Bergio. Bergio still with control, sends it out to Perlman. Perlman for control, sends it back out to Ball. Ball can't handle it, and so Joe Lay. And they award it to the Vaqueros. And now Joe Lay being given a yellow card by Elmer Cabling. Jolie very dissatisfied with the call and her frustration shows. So yellow card given to Noel Jolie of the Highlanders. Referee Elmer Cabling waiting for Jolie to come off the field. Coming in for Jolie, number 19, Julia Bohe. So Bohe checks in. She'll be some fresh legs for the Highlanders. Good close-up action as the ball sails down. That's off the foot of Laura Downey. And so the throw-in will come from Amanda Montgomery down deep once again in the Highlanders' territory. Kota will have the throw-in. Substitution, Tiffany Fay. So Fay comes in, she'll have fresh legs. Nice strong throw, getting into the box. Action heating up, that's gonna go outside of the goal line, so it'll be a goal kick and the Highlanders will try and bring it back out and somehow figure out how to get the ball down deep into the Vaqueros part of the field and try and put a shot on goal. Really hasn't been that many opportunities for either team to try and send the ball towards the net. Faye sends it down, going after it, the double 13s, Vizcarra and Lusk. This time it stays in possession of Lusk and the Vaqueros, and they'll bring it back out. So to try and finish the story from last year, 1997, it was the Vaqueros having a four to one lead at halftime, ended up having to fight off a charging San Pascal, scoring goals two more late in the half, and the final score of that one was four to three. Well, the Vaqueros have done what they've wanted to do, keep the ball down deep in the Highlanders' territory, just haven't been able to get the ball headed towards the net, and there it is, just missing. Wide of the near post, off the foot of Desiree, or Desiree Reese. That was a close one. And that's what we talked about, is you keep the ball down in your opponent's part of the field, and you're going to have opportunities, and it's basically a law of probabilities. More opportunities, 
come up when you get that ball down there. And for the Vaqueros, they've got the nod right now. But you never know. The Highlanders need just to have one mistake or one person out of position down in the Vaqueros part of the box, and it quickly could go the other way. Highlanders, very game. Both teams still playing and not giving up. Ball is now free. Racing into the box was Lusk, but didn't have control of the ball. Perlman sends it back down, racing forward in the corner of Montgomery. She'll get there in time as she centers it across. Perlman can't handle it. Picked up now by Skoda. And once again, the Vaqueros trying to put the attack off and some pressure on the Highlanders. This time, the foul in favor of the Highlanders, and so the kick comes. Off the foot now of Fleischer. Downfield coming quickly from behind, Lacey Lewis. Back towards midfield. Faye sends it down. Lusk is there. Lusk centers the ball out to Reese. Up in the air looking for a header. No one can get to it. This time it's Kofelt. Kofelt chip shots it outside of the touchline on the near side. 20 minutes left, halfway through the second half, no score. Good strong throw in by Sondra Kota. Most of the teams have strong fundamental skills. I mean, you have to have them to get this far. Spoke earlier to Sean Harp in the beginning of the game, wanting to find out really the strengths of the team. And the strengths really were multidimensional. Nice clear out. There's one of the strengths right there is the good sweeper leg of Chamney. Defense plays a strong part in the Vaqueros winning record. For the Highlanders, Multi-talented as well. They look for the help of Amanda Onan as well as Laura Downey to help drive the ball into the net. The Vaqueros also known for well passing. They're fast. They're even also a very close-knit group of kids. That helps a lot. Talked a little bit to Holly Penner as well. Paul, uh, Holly, one of the injured players, sophomore, she talks about how close their team is. Says it really helps out a lot when you like the people you play with. Makes sense. Lusk picks up the ball. Nobody's there, so it's sent back by Oda Hall. Faye out to Bergio. And now passing displayed. Kota. Faye back over to Bergio. Just, we just talked about it a minute ago about the passing abilities of the Vaqueros, and right there you saw a little bit of it. This is a great field for passing. Now coming down is Onan. Onan, nice job, Chamney. Chamney slide tackles the ball away. Picked up now by Moody to send it out. Off the side of her foot. And the ball sails out. No score. Second half of play. Ball coming back in. Possession Highlanders. There's a visiting team during this game. The honorary home team, the El Capitan Vaqueros. Substitution now coming in, something we haven't seen much of by Coach Gary Wilcox. Joe Lay now back into the game. Looking to clear it out. Good booming kick by Chamney. Bounces and carries through. Now picked up by Lusk. Lusk sending it down, and that'll be into the hands of Alessi. Take a look at Alessi's kick. She'll send it out. Carries through past the midline. Picked up by Kota. Kota sends it back. Lusk is there. And so is a host of Highlanders. Good effort by Viscara to take the ball back. 
Good tackle. Joe Lay, very, very talented player, playing very aggressively today. Throw in now by Lewis. Flag goes up by the linesman. Ball awarded back out. Quick throw in now by Onan. Ball is in. Ortiz is there. And again, cleared out at the last moment by Chamney. Ortiz was charging in, looking to sneak in there. And Downey doing another good job. If that ball would have got by, Lusk was ready to run after it and pick it up for a drive. And Joe Lay smails one from outside the box, goes over and above the crossbar. And so a goal kick comes up for the Vaqueros. Good crowd on both sides. Edge has it to the Vaqueros in regards to spirit. They've really been supporting their team very loud. They cheer on quite a bit. Positive reinforcement. You can hear them in the background. Ball's going to bounce outside the touchline. That'll go back over to the Highlanders. Good throw in. This Kara. Good throw in. 15 minutes left in this second half. Remember, we go to OT and it's sudden victory. Have two overtimes and ultimately, nice ball downfield. Montgomery now racing to the corner, centering it across, goes into the net on the near sideline. Very tough play to make. You got your body heading one direction and you're taking a swing with your foot and boy you really can land in a very awkward position getting back up slowly amanda montgomery and she did just that what she did was she took that swing with her right foot her body was out of position and then she actually took a hard tumble down on it Now coming into the game, uh, Melanie Ball. Ball comes in as fresh legs as Amanda Montgomery takes a breather. Coach Robert Romero takes a look at her. She's pointing to her inside right foot. And quickly, it's Melanie Ball who gets some action coming right in the game for Amanda Montgomery. Ball outside the touchline. Both teams playing very aggressively but very clean. Amanda Montgomery standing just a few feet away from us talking to Coach Romero and she's got some pain but she'll be back into the game. Ball up into the air outside the touchline. Throw in now. <laughs> and the whistle blows by cabling the referee just making sure it was the Highlanders ball. So now the throw in with close up action. Odahal sends it back in. Joe Lay looking for the ball. Sent back by Chamney. Now on the far sideline, it's Bohe, Bohe and Zapata down there. Faye is there. Ortiz tries to center it to Joe Lay. Ball is free and now picking it up. And sending it back down, Chamney. Chamney, nice ball towards the middle. And ball awarded. Number seven, Holly Fleischer. Called with the foul. So the free kick comes with El Capitan. And the booming foot of Brianne Chamney now coming up. Nice ball. That's going to carry down over everybody. Ball stays in on the far side, and it's going to be a corner kick. 
Nice ball went over the heads of everybody racing for it. Were the Highlanders, they couldn't keep control as it went out over the goal line. And so the Vaqueros in a familiar position, Becky Perlman with the corner kick duties, and we'll see what she can do this time. The last couple kicks by Perlman have been overshot. She wants to try and get the ball bending across the face and letting it die just at the far post. Her far post, our near post as we call the game. This time it's a good one. Gets by everybody. That was a great ball. It died right at the near post, right where you wanted it to, to give an opportunity for a redirection. Quick throw in now by Ball as action stays heated up down deep in the Highlanders part of the field, just outside the box. Four control picked up by five Fleischer. Fleischer sends it out, and it'll be a throw in by Ball. Ball takes the ball, gives it over to Coda. So let's see how far Coda can throw it inside the box. Coda, good, strong throw away in the box. Stays inside, back out. Nice control by Bergio. Sent back the other way in control by Chamney. Chamney, good effort. Now Chamney after the ball. Nobody there for the Highlanders, so she'll turn around and send it back down. Chamney now going after the ball. Good effort by Viscara racing for it was Perlman. Now the ball is free, centering it. Shot on goal. Saved by Alessi. Zapeta with the strong foot, but right there, Alessa. And the Highlanders once again deny the charging offense of the Vaqueros. Off the foot of Coda, so it goes back to the Highlanders. Throw in off the two hands of Lisa Lewis. Joe Lay. Stays possession Highlanders and moving back down 936 left in the second half. No score. Good redirection by Onan goes right back out and again stays in possession of the Highlanders. Yesterday we were also up in the Northern Coastal Area, Encinitas Area, playing at San Diego Field. We saw the Division IV girls, Francis Parker School, beat Bishops for the girls' Division IV title. We also took on and broadcast the boys. And taking a tumble is one of the Caros, and it's referee Elmer Cabling making sure that Rachel Otahal knows that that is not what he wants to see out on the field. So the free kick now comes off of Chamney. Chamney now is going to try and send it deep. Let's see what happens. Bending, bending away from the net. The action and the header. And that's going to be cleared out. So a nice redirection by Elizabeth Lusk. A hand was put on it by Mary Alessi. And then one of the Highlanders players was able to finish it off by kicking it out of bounds. So the throw in now comes deep on the far sideline. Clear out by Kofelt. Gets by everybody. So going after it is Joe Lay sends it back over. Chamney chips it down. Right there is Zapeta. Zapeta trying to turn the corner. And a corner kick for the Vaqueros. Good defense once again by the Highlanders. Perlman with the corner kick. Last time Perlman had a really nice corner kick. The ball died right on the near post, our near post as we broadcast. And it was an opportunity for someone to redirect it in. They'll see if she can do the same thing. 
you got to get the ball in the air. You got to get it bending towards the net. You want to get it where it just dies right at the post area, looking for some help and a redirection. Here comes Perleman. Another nice ball, looking right for it. Gets by everybody, though. Shot on goal by Melanie Ball. It's wide of the near post, and so the goal kick comes for the Highlanders. Time and time again, the Vaqueros have been down there threatening. They just can't find the secret to put the ball in the net right now. Looks like 642 left. Now picking the ball up, moving down. Reese, ball taken away. Picked up by Odahal. Odahal challenged by Ball. And taking a shot at one of the cameramen here. Ball went off the foot of the Vaquero, went right into the lens of the cameraman. Throw in now by Fleischer. Fleischer with a nice throw. Good jump header back by Coda. Comes back to the foot of Chamney. Chamney, nice footwork to try and move the ball downfield. Nice work, Chamney, for her size, showing agility. Chamney is a, one of the taller and bigger athletes on the team, but she really showed her agility there. Throw in on the far sideline by the Highlanders. Kick up high, on in. Now it's bouncing inside the box. Highlanders trying to be there, headed by Joe Lay, right into the hands of Moody. And there you go, you just never know what's going to happen and how plays are going to develop. Because out of nowhere, the Highlanders get a ball with a good bounce, and Joe Lay was there. Once again, up in the air, trying to clear it out, Vaqueros. This time it is done. Back going is Downey sends it back. Jolie is there, trap by Kota. Off of Jolie, so it goes back to the Vaqueros. Substitution now coming back into the game is Amanda Montgomery. Montgomery took the tumble in the near corner and came off limping. She's back into the game. Jolie challenging Lusk. Ball comes through. Can't quite get there, so it takes a turn on the part of the field that is very dry and very hard, and that ball came off of the turf and skipped very quickly, and there was no chance for Lusk to be able to get to the ball. Jolie with the throw in. Four minutes left in this second half. No score, and we have got a doozy. And if it continues to go as it is, with four minutes left in the game, now 3.59 and counting, we are going to go into some OT here. Throw in. Trying to clear it out, and a good job, good long ball by Perleman. Now down in the corner, racing for it was Lusk, and then it was taken away by Downey and moved back. Now picked up by Zepeda. Challenged by Ortiz. Sit down on the far side. Picked up by Odahal. There defensively for the Vaqueros is Bergio. Throw in now. Highlanders on the far sideline. Marceau. We'll see if she can get the ball in the box. This time she's going to give it back over to Viscara. So Viscara will see how far she can put the ball. Action inside the box. Corner kick for the Highlanders. So with 2.44 to play, the Highlanders now have an advantage. They're going to have a corner kick. Ortiz. And now it's the Highlanders' turn to see if they can execute a corner kick. Be looking for Laura Downey. 
She's going to be in the middle. She's going to be looking to put her head on it. Here comes the ball coming across. A lot of action. Looking to clear the Vaqueros. The ball stays in, and now it's cleared out temporarily. Going after the ball, or the Highlanders can't quite get to it. Man, oh man, that is action to its fullest. As the ball came in off the foot of Ortiz, and not only was Laura Downey there, but a host of Highlanders. No one was able to put a foot on the ball. The ball came back out, and for the Vaqueros, they were ultimately able to send the ball downfield. Now less than two minutes to play. Elmer Cabling now responsible for giving us the final whistle to end this game. We'll leave it up to him. But now the Highlanders on the attack once again. They've come alive the last few minutes, and they want to try and do something. Bicycle kick. We're seeing all sorts of things now as time runs down. No score. Goal kick. Brian Chamney is going to try and send it down deep. Headed back the other way by Kofelt. And the tumble goes. Foul against the Highlanders. Vaqueros will have the free kick. It looks like we're going into OT, folks. Brian Chamney. Nice ball downfield. Close-up action, nice trap and carry through. Going after the ball, Lusk. Lusk racing for the corner. She gets it, crosses it, and right there is Viscara. So coming across was a nice crossing pass looking for some help. It looked like there might be an opportunity, but a good heads-up play by Bree Viscara. And now, with literally seconds left in the game, the Vaqueros, off the foot of Becky Perlman, are going to try and do something magic right here. Perlman brings a shot in, gets by everybody. Now the ball picked up by Zapata. Zapata moving it down on the far corner. Brings it in to Reese. Reese just crossing behind. Looked like it might have gone in front, but it was behind. Wide of the far post. And so it now comes the Highlanders ball. They're going to goal kick and send it back. And energy has heightened up. Cleared out by Fleischer. Now moving downfield. Good screen by Bergio for control. Sends it back to Chamney. Chamney booms it back downfield, gets by everybody, and now there's an opportunity. An offsides call. So offsides was called against the Vaqueros, and what looked like a prime opportunity for a potential score is denied, and Laura Downey for the Highlanders sends the ball back into play. Nice trap by Nathman. Now out on the far sideline, Zapata challenged by Bohe. Awarded now, quick throw in. Onin, Onin being challenged nicely. Now the whistle blows. And a yellow card is going to be issued to it looks like Kendra Ball. Check that. Heather Bergio. Bergio with a heated exchange gets the yellow card and that results in a free kick now for the Highlanders and with literally seconds left in the game it's Ortiz with a strong shot and Ortiz mails one long distance, and the ball goes into the net on the near post. And the Vaqueros are stunned. Christy Ortiz, who was named Soccer Prep Player of the Week because of her assist 
and a game-winning goal against the Scripps Ranch. And now the Highlanders, with only moments left to play, go out in front off the talented foot of Christy Ortiz. Ortiz scored the lone goal of the game as Helix beat Escondido in overtime to advance to the Division II championship. Ortiz also had the assist on the game-winning goal in Helix's 2-1 to upset of top-seeded Scripps Ranch. And if we have it again, Ortiz is going to be the MVP, if you will, of this one, too. And all game long, it was Vaqueros time and time again who had been down deep in the Highlanders' territory to come up empty-handed. And now it's the foot of Chamney. Chamney tries to send one deep, bending and misses the left pigeonhole. Goal kick. Check that goal kick. Goal kick for the Highlanders. And you got to give credit to Christy Ortiz because when it there's a need to come up big, she has done it. Again, she did it beating Escondido in overtime. She did it in beating Scripps Ranch, who is the top-seeded team. Christy Ortiz is the player of this game. And that is the whistle. And that is the game. And the Helix Highlanders are now crowned the women's Division II high school soccer champions. Both teams have to feel proud about what they did out on here. Obviously, El Capitan Vaqueros, who would put the offense pressure on the, on the uh, Highlanders all game long, stunned by the foot of Christy Ortiz. After 80 minutes of play, the final score, Helix Highlanders won. El Capitan Vaqueros nothing. Once again, the Highlanders crown the women's Division II high school soccer champions. Number 15. 
18, Sandra Coda. Number 16, Alicia Masteller. Number 17, Brianne Chamney. Number 18, Heather Bergio. Number 19, Kendra Ball. Number 20, Melanie Ball. Number 21, Bree Smith. The assistant coach is Sean Hart. And to receive the award for the runners up, the head coach, Robert Romero. Ladies and gentlemen, the Division II women's runner up for 1998, the Vaqueros of El Capitan High School. Standing with me is Laura Downey. Uh, congratulations, Thanks. first of all, on a great game. Thank you. Now, you're going up against the defending champions. What did you guys think uh, in your regards to your chances for this game? 
Actually, I was very nervous all day, and the day was the longest day I've ever had in my whole <laughs> life. <laughs> we were really excited. I mean, we were really excited just to make it to the finals, but we wanted to go all the way, you know. And we, the start of CIF was a whole new season for us. We started working really hard, and a couple of us moved positions, and we just we wanted it, and we came out here, worked together, and just prevailed and it was such it's such an awesome feeling it's just great well time and time again the the Carols were moving down the field and yes. your your defensive play <laughs> helped out a lot to keep that ball from going in the net um, we had a lot of communication back there um, we call our defense the steel curtain <laughs> we try to live up to it every game and um, as well done job back there you lived up to it today congratulations thank on you. the championship thank you Standing with me is the keeper of the game, Mary Alessi. Congratulations, first of all, on the championship. Thank you very much. What did Coach tell you guys you needed to do at the beginning of this game? Well, he told us we needed to work extremely hard, which we have been the entire season. Everyone contributed, and he told us we needed to stick to our game and do what we had to do, and we knew exactly what that was. How hard is it to play a keeper in a championship game like this? What's going through your mind? Oh, there's so much pressure. It's unbelievable. But uh, I guess in the excitement of the game, you can't think about, you know, your nerves or whatever. You have to pay attention to what everyone's doing and stick with the game. Well, one quick question is that when the ball's coming at you, are your eyes open or closed? Uh, they're open. <laughs> okay. Congratulations on the championship. Thank you again. Very good. Standing uh, with me is one of the many superstars on this team, Amanda Nahn, and first of all, congratulations on a championship. Thanks. How does it feel to be crowned the Division II champion? Overwhelming. It hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, you're coming in to uh, play the defending champions. What was, it, what was the strategy that your team had going into this game? Um, we just planned to play their best and play like we've been playing and play all out and just play with our hearts. What, talking about hearts, what do you feel most proud of that you uh, did on the field today for your team? Um, that I accomplished that foul <laughs> <laughs> to get the goal. So what happened over there? We were pretty far away. What um, happened on that? Well, me and her were just going at it for the ball, and I was just sick of her the whole game. And turns out that he decided to give both of us yellow cards, which was not totally uncalled for. It was just not out of the question. So then Christy gets, uh, gets the opportunity to put the ball in the net, and she does it yeah. again. Yeah. Well, congratulations on a great win and a good championship. Thank you very much. Great. Standing with me are two of the superstar players from the Al Capitan Vaqueros. You are? Shawnee Flint. And you are? Tiffany Fay. You know, you guys were putting pressure on them all game long, and what a way to, uh, to lose it with seconds left. But there, you guys have to feel good about the game, don't you? Um, I feel good about it. It would have been good to end our year with a win, um, but we clearly had a lot, a lot of chances, but we didn't put them away, and that was the difference in the game. Absolutely. And on the far sideline, we've got to Tiffany Fay, who was all over the field. Is that your lucky bandana, by the way? Uh, actually, yeah, it is. It was given to me by one of the fellow players, and it's kind of our little symbol, our good luck. Did you wear it all through the uh, playoffs? Or yeah, the actually, just through the playoffs, just to, to get us through. That's, that's great. Now, how long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing since I was five years old. Five years? <laughs> yeah. Can you name every team that you've ever played on in soccer? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Let's try Try some of the names. Okay. Can you remember? Um, the Red Sox, the Shamrocks, the, <laughs> the Pink Panthers. Going way back there. Yeah, right? <laughs> there's a lot of them. <laughs> now, do you play any other sports besides soccer? Uh, yeah, actually, I do varsity track and varsity cross country. So you're a, you're a runner both in the track. What uh, events do you run in? Um, actually, I'm a jumper. I do the oh, long really? and triple jump. Yeah, and occasionally I do the four by 100 relay. Well, congratulations. You guys, it was a great game I was calling. I really thought it was going to go into OT, and I'll be darned if Krista just had to boot that one in there. But don't feel bad. You should feel proud. Very good game by you guys today. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. Standing with me, Coach Gary Wilcox. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. You know, you have to, a lot of limelight is on um, Christy, but, you know, it was the whole team, really, that came up big today. Yeah, it was a team effort. The last four games, uh, we were seated ninth. Um, a lot of people didn't think that we would uh, string it together for so long. We seemed to peak right at the right time. I mean, it was a team effort. The girls have been playing awesome the last four games. Um, it was definitely a team effort. Everyone did their best out there. What was the strategy going into today's game? What did you try and do to try and stay with the defending champions of the Carols? 
Well, uh, the two front runners are very fast. Uh, they play a lot of small, s short touches in the midfield. What we tried to do is we tried to hold up the two front runners, which we did, um, contain them outside our box because I know they love to take shots. So I said if we keep the shots outside the box, they shouldn't be too dangerous, and we, we just held on. So there's a few seconds left in the game. Guess who has an opportunity? Christy, she's done it before. In your gut, did you think you had a chance? Hey, I told them at halftime, it only takes one. It only takes one, and they believed it, you know, and they worked very hard for the, you know, whole, whole game with 30 seconds left. Okay, I just, I just said give it a shot. So she did, took one shot, and went in. Well, congratulations as being crowned the Division II champions. Thank you. Great. That was Coach Gary Wilcox. Thank you, Coach. Great game today. We had two top teams, the defending champions, the Vaqueros, were coming on trying to repeat, but it wasn't to be today because it was the foot of Christy Ortiz and the rest of the Helix Highlander team that did the damage. The final score in this one, one to nothing. And let's take a look at this plaque of the Highlanders. They are crowned the 1998 Division II team champions in women's soccer. On behalf of George Langevin Sports Video Productions, as always, we'll see you again. I'm Dan Williams.